4 a.m. on March 28, 1979, the United States experienced its most significant accident at a nuclear power plant. Three Mile Island Nuclear Generating Station, named for its location on an island in the Susquehanna River, approximately three miles south of Middletown, Pennsylvania, suffered severe coolant loss, resulting in the partial meltdown of one of its two reactors. The facility was irreparably damaged, and the incident contaminated public opinion against nuclear energy for decades to come. TMI Unit 2, a 900 megawatt pressurized water reactor that began commercial operation only three months prior, was running at 97% capacity when the plant's safety systems detected unusually high pressure in the coolant water loop, automatically triggering a scram shutdown of the reactor. Within seconds, the plant's emergency core cooling system activated to continue the flow of water over the shutdown but still extremely hot reactor. Unbeknownst to the plant operators, a pressure relief valve that opened during this process had failed to close, diverting water needed to cool the reactor into a reserve tank. By 5 a.m., coolant in the reactor was flashing to steam and the rumble of cavitating pumps could be felt in the control room. By 6 a.m., so much coolant was lost that the nuclear fuel of Unit 2's reactor core was no longer covered by water. As the reactor began to destroy itself with intense heat, steam irradiated by ruptured fuel rods escaped into the containment building, triggering radiation alarms. By 7 a.m., the core was two-thirds uncovered and approaching 4,000 degrees, hot enough not only to collapse the reactor assembly, but to melt the uranium fuel itself. Radiation levels reached 800 rem, high enough for a plant worker to receive their yearly allowable dose in just 20 seconds. Yet even though the core of TMI-2 was destroyed, the accident did not release hazardous amounts of radiation into the surrounding countryside. The melted fuel did not breach the reactor's pressure vessel and contaminated water was captured within the containment building. The concept of defense in depth was tested and redundant containment did its job. In the face of a critical core meltdown, safety systems worked as designed. And despite serial equipment malfunctions and operator error that morning, it did not result in disaster. Radiation exposure to the surrounding population was only slightly higher than normal background levels, and still far less than the average dose a person would receive on a typical commercial passenger flight. While operator error also contributed to the worst nuclear disaster in history seven years later at Chernobyl, the consequences of the two differ drastically. Chernobyl was the result of a design flaw that caused a reactor to explode when scrammed, with no pressure vessel or containment structure whatsoever to prevent the release of nuclear material. In the end, TMI-2 would be written off as a total loss, a $500 million investment, bricked less than three months after it began operation. The final cost of the 14-year cleanup came to just over a billion dollars. With final decommissioning of the site, not expected until 2034.